Welcome to The Positivity Show. I am ultra, ultra excited today to be introducing to my business community someone who has been a true leader on his own business journey and someone who I had the pleasure of sitting with and having coffee would have been uh, a couple of years ago now, but he's definitely been in my orbit and uh, is doing some incredible things now as he's trans transformed his own uh, he's, he's reinvented himself and had a, an, a transformational journey. Um, I really consider this gentleman to be a, a mentor and someone who is really um, holding space for people uh, as they move through their own leadership circles and make change in the world. And I know he's making a positive difference. And that's why I've invited him onto the program today. The one and only, welcome to The Positivity Show. John Lockwood. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, Tanya. Good <laughs> to be with you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm super intrigued um, with what you've been up to, but I'd love to start with um, maybe your insights, if you can. If you were to kind of look back on your on your life, particularly through the prism of business and relationships, leadership. And you were, you were talking to your younger self and you were going to give some guidance or mentoring, say, to your, you know, your younger self at, at 25 or something. What would yeah. you kind of, how would you direct and guide yourself now with everything that you've learned and been? Yeah. Um, I, I, I definitely would be saying to myself, um, make sure you've always got two or three mentors around you to help you on your journey and learn to listen to your inner self when making major decisions. Once you've, you know, um, developed a team around you that you can trust to bounce things off and get their ideas. Um, but, and mentors, of course, that you trust that you can talk with, but then, listen to your inner self for the decisions that you're going to make. You know, there's many times in the past where I'm sure everybody's experienced, you know, you've got a decision to make, it looks good on paper, it makes sense, but something in your gut says, oh, I'm not sure about this, but you go ahead and do it and um, thinking it's the right thing and it turns out to be a disaster. <laughs> and I suppose, you know, that was some of the lessons that, you learn by making mistakes. Mm. Um, um, but everything that adds up on paper is not necessarily the right, um, the right answer for what you're well, supposedly to do. Wow. So that would be one thing I'd say to myself. Um, uh, the other thing I'd say is to um, you know, make sure you get your priorities in the right order. Um, and now I would, you know, I, I think I actually wrote about this years ago. I'd say, you know, my old priorities in the days of building and running Blackburn and Lockwood would be look after yourself, number one. Um, uh, number two, look after your employees. Number three, um, uh, spend some time with the family. Number four would be holidays. Number uh, number eight, nine, or ten would be you know actually you know try to find your purpose in your life. Um, and then in 1997, when I had uh, a special what some people call a white light experience, all those priorities changed around wow. to right, let's find my purpose in life. Why am I here? Mm. And my family must come first. Mm -hmm. uh, um, together with my relationships with my creator mm. and then everything else falls into place mm. so as a youngster at 25 I had it exactly the opposite way mm. um, make the money look after yourself get all the toys then you'll be happy and I've <laughs> learned it doesn't work that way mm. yeah. wow Fantastic. So um, for those of you, for those people in my community who perhaps haven't uh, joined the dots yet, do you mind just sharing a little bit about your 
uh, you know, the business story, just just a little bit to kind of give them some insight into to where you've come from. And then I'd love yeah. to jump into some of the, the areas where we've got common ground on. But would you mind just sharing a little bit about, you know, the sure. business that you, you built and, and your, yeah. your history there, the backstory? So I joined my family business at the age of 25, the company called Blackburn and Lockwood, which was started by my grandfather. And then his three sons went into it and created a little corporate uh, network in Melbourne, in Victoria. And uh, I joined at the age of 25 as a junior salesperson, um, made my way through sales to becoming quite successful. I uh, made my way into being a manager where I was quite unsuccessful uh, for a period of time. What do you mean I have to be responsible for other people's actions and, and not just my own? Um, gradually, I went back into sales and then learnt about leadership. And then in 1986, I made a decision together with uh, a couple of others to franchise the business. Um, and we were the first franchise in Victoria of a real estate company. And uh, we started with um, 10 uh, franchised offices. Uh, and in five years, we grew that to be 42 offices. Uh, so by 1992, we had 42 offices. And it was a huge learning journey, if you like, franchise growth. Um, developing people, leadership, uh, sales, training, you know, all those things that were necessary to develop um, a big business. In 1992, after, for those who are old enough to remember, we'd had uh, 1989, 1991, the recession we had to have. I had uh, all these offices. Um, and leaders in those offices who were struggling during those recession years. So my world was built around, you know, keeping them afloat and then uh, looking after, you know, mortgagee sales and, you know, the marriage split ups that were going on in those days. It became a seven day a week, um, not happy time, let's put it that way. But when you're ahead of a company, you do what you have to do. So I was working seven days a week. And um, in 1992, my oldest son at 13, uh, when I came home one night early, about eight o'clock at night, he uh, told me to go and get lost because I had no right to speak into his life because I was never there, never went to his sport, never did anything with him. And that really hit me that I was losing touch with my family. Um, and after a week or so, I made a decision to get out of the business. So um, uh, it was, you know, one of those shredding moments. Wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, my wife said at the time, uh, what do you think you're going to do now? And I said, well, I'm going to follow my passion. And my passion is to see other people growth. So I'm going to start a training academy. So in 1992, I started uh, initially, um, it was called the Lockwood Training Academy. And then it changed its name to Coaching for Results as it developed over the next five or seven years. So... That's a little bit of the story uh, wow. of those early days. Thank you so much. That's That really gives context. And, you know, I've got um, people in my um, positive business network who are, you know, owners, business entrepreneurs, and, you know, I, I know that they'll really, you know, value the, you know, the depth and the, the you know, the, the real, you know, the pains and the joys, obviously, of, of those times will be able to relate to that. So... John, for you, um, in terms of mentor, you know, you talked earlier about, okay, if I was talking to my younger self, I'd have mentors. You know, I think what can come to mind for us, particularly in business, we think, oh, yes, I'm going to need someone in finance and I'm going to need someone in, you know, managerial skills. 
But I'm wondering at what point did it become crystal clear for you the importance of balancing the inner world and not just focusing on that two-dimensional piece around what it looks like from the outside in, yeah. but what it really, really had to flip it on its head and say, you know what, it's the three-dimensional, unmeasurable, unable to see, unable to touch things that are actually the most key pieces to leading yeah. our lives um, emotionally, yeah. spiritually, from a soul standpoint. Yeah. What was it? A death in the family? What was? What, when was your? Yeah. When was your moment where you went? You know what? There is so much more than what meets the eye, and and you became. You know, you, your depth shifted. Yeah. What, 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 what would that? I be? Th look, I think it started at the by the age of about thirty-two. I, at that stage, I was married. I had four children under five years of age. Uh, I was working in sales. I was managing to spend more money than I was making, which is always a, an interesting thing. Um, um, uh, um, my uncle said to me, um, I think you should, you know, start to develop yourself a bit more and learn more, John. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, look, I've, I've booked some tickets to go and see a man called James Rowan. Um, who was an American speaker. I love Jim wanted... Rowan. I love him. I'm with you. I'm with you. I was around in that era. I gotcha. Keep going. Yep. So he, I turned up uh, one night with, you know, four or 500 others. And uh, the name of the seminar was, the, it was the day that turns your life around. And um, I sat there cross-armed, didn't want to listen but he was like, as he was talking, he was talking about my life, all the challenges, all the struggles. And then, you know, he introduced me to the first time about goal setting. And I said, oh, fantastic. <laughs> so I went home that night and uh, woke my wife up and said, we're going to write 50 goals and um, uh, we're going to achieve them over the next five years, 10 per year. And she said, you're nuts, but we did it. <laughs> anyway, uh, two years later, I'd achieved all those goals, <laughs> including a buying, uh, which was my, you know, one of my high priorities, buying a midnight blue um, Mercedes 380 SEL. <laughs> because if you had one of those in real estate, you'd made it. You made it, <laughs> absolutely. Mercedes so, recline of mine, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> later, I bought that. Mercedes Benz for seventy five thousand six hundred dollars cash. I was very successful mm. uh, in sales. Was doing really well. And after I bought the car, and I finished the fifty goals, I went, "Well, what's next?" There was a hollowness yeah. still inside me, going, "What's next?" Mm -hmm. And the question for me was, "Well, why am I here? Is there?" a purpose to life? Is there something other than just achievement and achieving things? Because I'm achieving, but I'm still not happy. Mm. And um, I think, you know, I wasn't religious, although my family were brought up as a Methodist. Uh, I'd got away from that at the age of 14, 15, 16. I, I had no sort of seeking, but I knew something was missing out of my life. Mm. So it started me on the journey of 13 years into the New Age movement to find out why am I here? Mm -hmm. ah, so that was a fascinating journey. <laughs> I, I, I'd just like to jump in here too because um, there were a lot of people listening who'll be able to, you know, definitely relate to this because you know, we do go on that search and we are seeking and we are looking for something and I believe that we're actually made that way and, you yeah. know, I, when, when you say creator, that resonates with me because, you know, I also, you know, I'm relating to to that I am created and that, you know, there is yeah. a, you know, God. So, yeah. um, however, I didn't, even though I was raised Catholic, that wasn't always the way because for me there were some things that happened that I didn't agree with, including going to... Uh, Rome and having my uh, you know, just being in Rome and just things didn't add up to me but so so I can definitely um, relate to know that a lot of people listening will be able to relate to this so 
when you say um, new age movement, it's really interesting too because a lot of people don't know this, John, and, and I want to put it on uh, on this um, uh, interview, is that Tony Robbins, who people do follow, um, studied under um, Jim Rowan and he, uh, you know, he, he was a lover of God and a man of God and I don't think... People realise that, and the same with Tom Hopkins. If you, you'd be, you'd be remember, yep. you remember Tom. Tom was a, a personal trainer. Used to come to Melbourne every year to talk with our our um, group of real estate people because that was his back, background in the yeah. US. Yeah, um, so um, and Tom became a personal friend of mine too. And I don't think, and it, they, these guys were the giants in this whole, you know, yep. motivational speaking world, right? Um, yep. And I don't, I think that that spiritual aspect was always an underpinning from from these guys, and then it sort of evolved. And yep. um, so when you talk about the New Age mo- movement, I'm interested in, you know, what kind of paths you ended up um, going down. <laughs> Was it Est or was well, it Landmark yeah. or was it um, was it that world or was it uh, all of the above? Okay. Um, um, Hoffman process, money and you, Landmark, you know, all of those um, particular processes in their early days. Yeah, I became a master of NLP in yeah. the um, in the eighties, uh, mid eighties, etc. So there were a number of different things I explored, and you know there were experiences I had that kept me wanting to know more, but never gave me the answer of why was I here. But there were little glimpses of things along the way that were outside, I'd say, my normal physical experience or emotional experiences that kept me wanting to know more. Mm. So it was a 13-year journey, if you like. Mm, Amazing. So interesting, isn't it, that there are um, those moments where you are at crossroads yep. and you do have these moments and they do feel spiritual and they do feel right. However, they end up being dead ends. And um, life kind of shows you that. And I've been through my fair share where I would say that I've run ahead of God, you know, um, and oh. and you just think, oh, I can do this on my own and, oh, this must be, this is all work, work this all, you know, this. And so... Yeah, and you run ahead. So um, I'm just interested in then, um, you know, okay. where, where, so, where you kind of turned because I know Israel's in yeah. here, and and and, um, and that's yeah, well, that was that was that came a bit later. The my relationship with the nation of Israel, but okay, okay, yeah, um, um, so I can tell you a bit more about that as we go. But let me just say that in those 13 years of seeking my mother was a uh, became a born again christian and she used to say cryptic things like you'll find your answer back at the beginning john or one day you'll be a teacher john and i'm going mum you just don't know what you're talking about <laughs> uh anyway uh some things happened in my life uh and in 1996 97 where one of my sons became ill with an eating disorder uh, and lost 22 kilos um, and nearly died. And at the same time, um, on December 23rd, 1996, I um, came to an awareness that my wife um, had entered into a relationship with somebody else. And um, those two things hit me like a brick uh, to the stage where I didn't want to be around wow. anymore. Wow. Um, so it, and I realised that any, all the money I had um, or assets or, or even contacts mm-hmm. couldn't change these things. So it was like, you know, I came to the end of myself, mm-hmm. if you like. Mm-hmm. And, um, Through a friend, um, Colin and Lisa McGuinness-Smith, at that particular time, Uh, Lisa was a very, the highest paid motivational speaker in in Australia at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to see them and they said, well, there is no other answer, but would you like to meet God? Mm -hmm. And I said, does he take away pain? (laughs) (laughs) And... um, I won't go through the rest of that story, but let me say, you know, that I had what some people call 
a white light experience. Um, I met God uh, face to face uh, in a vision and I was filled with love that I cannot explain. Wow. And suddenly I knew there was a God that was real and that he loved me. Mm. Um, it set about a whole change of everything I'd ever done, everything I'd ever thought important. Um, yes, my son got better within six months. My marriage didn't come back together, but it set me on a pathway to find the purpose for my life, which actually happened within three months of that experience. And suddenly I knew that um, I had a purpose to fulfill and that I was now on the right journey. John, thank you so much for sharing that. And did, the, did that deep um, hollow feeling disappear at that point when you had after this encounter did you feel totally. gotcha okay so it yeah. was like this hankering for something that you couldn't explain and then all these things happened in your life and yep. then all of a sudden you had this deep level of satisfaction or that everything was okay like a, a peace was it a peace would you describe it as or yes a, it was yeah. a peace yeah yeah it was a Brilliant. peace it was no, no more fear the fear had gone the fear um, and yes, there was a peace, and I knew I was loved. Um, you know, and for a human being, that's you know, the ultimate, if you like. It's, yeah, it's it's very Sorry. interesting to talk to you because, you know, you, to me, you are you know the quintessential alpha male leader, highly successful, um, you know, you know, presence, all those things, and then and in my world, I know that. You know, I'm working and have been working with for, for many years, you know, a, lo a lot of males who are in, you know, very similar to yourself, big, big levels of responsibility. Yeah. But at the same time, some of their, their drivers are because they, you know, they weren't loved by their parents or they um, yeah. had an abusive father or they were rejected. Yeah. And there was some wound that was actually, it's been driving them to prove that they're lovable, right? And um yeah. These are very private discussions that occur, but we do touch on, you know, the answer isn't in the two dimension. The, no. the answer is, is in a whole other place and it's not necessarily the new age movement either. So, no. um, <laughs> so this is really fascinating. Um, yeah. So, then, so my so lessons yeah. were, you know, that the, the new age movement gave me a taste, but it never gave me answers. Um, it never fulfilled. It just led me on a trial. Mm. So I'm thankful for many of, you know, uh, the things that happened at that time. Mm. But until I came to personal relationship with a creator um, that I knew was real, I know that I know that I know, um, that uh, then things started to fall into place. And that started the journey of both the change of my business, the way I coached and mentored, led me into um, relationships that were far outside my old real estate days, into nations and into Australia as a land with leaders, and, and in particular to the nation of Israel, um, which is quite funny because um, as a real estate agent in 1988, I can re remember myself telling my franchisees, um, w I have decided we will no longer do business with Jewish people. Yeah. Um, um, because you can't trust them. They work against you. <laughs> they, they, they have all these different Absolutely. ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and then I, I say now to my Jewish friends, God has a sense of humour because 20 years later, he placed me into the middle of uh, the nation in Jerusalem where I met on my third day there. I met uh, Shimon Perez, Bibi Netanyahu, most of the cabinet members who are now all become friends and acquaintances um, and some of the top business people and all of the, the technical and IT and, and things that I share with business people now 
most of it comes out of that nation. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's so amazing and so interesting. So, so now what I'm getting is your all the preparation, all your leadership, all your communication skills, all what I call connectology, the ability to, you know, be with people, develop people, develop relationships. And now here you are on a completely different level and a completely different scale doing it in a, in a way that is, um, you know, really, you know, in, in, about alliances and, and, and influence. So let's... Um, what I'd love to do is say to you, look, let's make this the first of perhaps a, a couple of discussions, but just to whet the appetite, um, you know, for, for people listening in, do you mind just sharing a little bit about, um, you know, some of the um, the nature of, of, you know, what you're shaping and, um, you know, where all of these skills of yours and these connections come to play, um, you know, what's the positive pathway that, you know, you're, you're really yeah. working through it and to the extent that you can share, that would, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a big question, but let me say that, um, you know, I'm working with partners around this country um, um, and people like Dave Hodson, who runs an uh, organization called the Paladin Group, but his passion is, uh, um, has a name called Kingdom Investors where, we um, meet and help uh, small business, medium business people to understand what we call um, basic principles or God's um, principles in how we run business in our lives in ethical, value-driven um, ways that benefit not just us but benefit communities that we live in and work amongst, etc., with an end vision to see a, a nation that is fair and just and honourable and all the things that we were actually created to be and to do and to have, where there'll be, you know, no poverty, that there'll, there'll be, uh, we'll look after, you know, the broken and the sick and, and we'll build communities based upon everybody prospering so that all might prosper. Nice. So that's a huge vision, and we've been on that track now for the last five to eight years working towards it and building networks around the country uh, that are all coming to like-mindedness Mm. and um, working towards influencing their communities in positive ways. Mm. And the benefit out of that is that they and their families benefit as well. Mm. But it's not, it's not the goal to make individual wealth, but it may happen because our eyes and our vision and our morals and our ethics lead people to do business with us because they can trust us. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, business, good business is headed to and makes it successful. Brilliant. Um, when it's all built around, you know, what we see in the world today, you know, the, without doubt, you know, we, we, we live in a world financially that's, um, uh, tottering. Uh, we live in a world where we see greed uh, run a number of decisions, uh, politicians, political, you know, economical, and even through to, you know, uh, medicinal and things like that. There are lots of things that we would say greed runs this world and it's all about, you know, it's all about me and what I can get out of it. And, but in fact, what I've learned is it's exactly the opposite. When we change our vision to work and help and support and encourage others, then everybody benefits and all prosper. So Absolutely. that's the big picture. That's massive. And, you know, I'm just really resonating on the, the whole serve first, you know, I mean, just serve first and then all these amazing things happen. And uh, it, it is about that, you know, the seeding and the connecting and flipping the, you know, the take model 
completely on its head, which is so yeah. counter instinctive. Like I draw a distinction between intuition and, and instinct. Instinct's about protection. Intuition's about creating. And I believe we yeah. were created to create and to share and to give and serve. And then that's where that, that amazing ripple effect. But what astounds me is, you know, the, the fast track, the speed to which, you know, doors open and carpets were rolled out. And some of the stories you've told me about, you know, that the people that you've met and, and, and the pathway that's been opened. So I would love to, to ask you um, if we can, um, you know, have you back and uh, maybe start talking a little bit about, um, you know, some of the connections you've made on this journey and their reactions to, to you know, what you're creating and, and their, their, um, their support. And, and then what, what yeah. that does is opens up, you know, my community. And for those that it resonates with, they may want to, you know, uh, to find out more, sure. too, right? So, so um, we'd, we'd, yeah. yeah. I'd love to do that. And I'd love to, you know, share with your community, you know, some of the projects and things we're doing in with Indigenous communities in the north uh, to help build them um, and, you know, some of the other worldly things that we've been connected with. Uh, I'd love to share that part of the journey with them. That, and that's, those people yeah. that want to help on that that pathway or feel called to do something yeah be happy to be a part of that that's brilliant because i know there are so many good-hearted people who you know who who want to do well or who do do well and i talk about business being you know we we scale we, we do a startup and then we scale and then we get to the point yeah. where you know we want to then um kind of you know, get into succession mode and we're stepping other people up, then we step back. But then once we're out of it, you know, if we don't have purpose and we don't have identity about, you know, what's next, um, you know, we can get lost. And I know a lot of, um, you know, our customers, our clients who are in that succession phase, they know that they want to build a business so they can be out of it or they can step out of it and they've got freedom of choice. But they don't know what that next trapeze is, John, and they get lost and they get sucked back into the vortex of the day-to-day -day because they want to be productive. But really, there's something yep. on their heart that they they know they want to seed, but they don't have the network, they don't have the right res, they don't have the right um, you know access points or you know connections or this kind of thing. So you know, my community is kind of the full spectrum of that, and I just feel that you you know it's a great piece of connectology here. We can really we can really um, you know uh, share and and see what yep. ripples. So. Yep. Um, and, and I'd like to also yep. just whet the appetite around, um, you know, your trip to Africa. So how about we do this? When you get back from this trip that you're doing um, next month, um, that we um, schedule another call and then uh, we, we, we discuss um, what that was like and we can, we can share what you did when you were over there. How's that sound? All right. That sounds great. Yes. Um... So, yes, I'm off next month for about three weeks into Ethiopia and the nation of Burundi as a, a part of an ambassadorial uh, trip for, um, with Barry Court, the ex-premier of uh, Western Australia, to meet, um, uh, well, we're told we've got meetings with the president, um, with the prime minister uh, and many cabinet things. It'll be a very interesting journey I'll report back in on. That'll be amazing. John, thank you so much for uh, this first uh, instalment and I wish you all the very best and thank you for being so, um, you know, open and sharing and authentic today with, with my people and the people that hear this I know will just get another, you know, that, that soul level um, connection. So thank you so much. Have an amazing trip. Be safe and thanks for being on The Positivity Show. Look forward to hearing all about your adventures when you get back. Okay, that's a pleasure. Look forward to the next step. Thanks, John. Okay, bye. Bye.